So today we're going to work on uh, section three, which is performing function operations and composition. So this is going to be a, this might be a review topic, it might not be. Uh, please let me know if, uh, if I go too fast on this uh, in class tomorrow. But I'm going to go, I should go slow enough that it should be okay. But we're going to be working with composition of functions. And this is uh, very related to using operations on functions like, you know, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, things like that. It's just taking it to the next step. Um, we have a couple of vocabulary things that we want to go over uh, to start out here. So we have the first thing we're going to talk about is a power function. has the form y equals ax to the b, where a is a real number and b is a rational number. That's pretty obvious. And then the second thing, which is the new thing, is the composite of a function g with a function f is h of x equals g of f of x. That's how you read that, g of f of x, just like this is h of x. This is g of f of x. Okay, and I know that may be a little bit confusing to start, but we will kind of see how that works. So moving on down, all these operations are very familiar to you. If we have two functions, we're going to add them. We just simply add them, subtract them, multiply them, and divide them. And this is how it works typically, just some examples just to remind you of that. Um, and it talks a little bit about the domain. The domain of H consists of the X values that are in the domains of both F and G. Remember, domain is possible X values. In other words, what X values can we use? Usually domain is stated as like all real numbers except for, and then usually there's some type of exception. Like for example, we know that the bottom of a fraction cannot be zero. So it would be whatever makes the bottom of that fraction zero. Maybe it's a square root where we know the square root can't be a negative number. So those would be our limitations. Basically a domain is asking for what are the limitations of our x value and we will see and uh, use, use that in this section as well. So let's get right into this just as a review. So we have two functions here in our example. It says let f of x equals negative 2x to the 2 thirds and g of x is 7x to the 2 thirds. So we're going to find the following operations. So we're going to add. Well, adding is real simple. We do negative 2x to the 2 thirds plus 7x to the 2 thirds. Now, one of the mistakes that I see you guys make sometimes is you all of a sudden think that we have to add the powers as well. That's not true. These are just like terms. So all we're doing is we're adding the coefficients and that's it. So here we end up with 5x to the 2 thirds and that's it. Okay, we're done there. Okay, let's do the next one. Negative 2x to the 2 thirds on top divided by 7x to the 2 thirds on the bottom. And here, again, we would normally divide negative 2 uh, and 7, but those cannot be reduced anymore, so we'll leave them as they are. With our uh, fraction of our exponents, we are subtracting. So this is x to the 2 thirds minus 2 thirds. So it's going to end up being 0, so we're left with negative 2 sevenths x to the 0, which is just negative 2 sevenths because x to the 0 is 1. We need to remember that. Now, the last part says we want to state what the domains are of both a and b. So in a, what we're looking for here is we're looking for any limitations. Well, we would have a root here, but because it's an odd root, we are allowed to take the odd root of negative numbers. So there is no limitations there. We could put any x value into this function right here and we will get some type of answer. We, don't, we will never get undefined. So our answer here is all real numbers. For the second one, however, this is a little bit different. Here we have a limitation not because we are, we've already determined that each of these individually can be all real numbers, but now we have a limitation because of what's on the bottom. Even though we ended up with negative two sevenths as our answer, we still have a problem with our bottom because if we put in x equals zero, it will make the entire bottom zero, which will give us undefined. So on this one, we would say all real numbers, but we would have to say where x is not equal to 
zero. So basically what this is saying is that as long as x is not equal to zero, x can be any real number other than that. Okay, and some people would say all real numbers uh, except x equals zero. I mean, as long as you write it and you clearly explain what the limitations are, then you're okay. But remember, you're always looking for what would make this undefined. Well, in this case, we're looking clearly at the bottom of the fraction. Okay, let's move on to composition of functions. This is where it gets a little bit more difficult. You're really going to have to pay attention to this. Watch step by step what we're doing. So again, when you're looking at two functions, and it's, this is what a composition of functions looks like. Now, the definition is stated up here, and then the domain, which is also important, it says, the domain of H is the set of all X values such that X is in the domain of F, and F of X is in the domain of G. Okay, so they need to be in the domain of each other. Okay, so basically you see an overlap here. So the domain of F is the input of F. Okay, so the domain is the X value. That will be input, that will give us an output of F. It's also going to give us an output of, uh, sorry, the, it's also going to be overlapped with the input of G. Okay, and again, we're, let, let's just get into this a little bit. And I mean, I know that these Venn diagrams do not always make sense with all these term, with all the terminology and domain and input and output. Okay, remember, domain is input and range is output. And we'll kind of get into this as we go through. So, going right into this, so we have g of f of x. What this means is, it means that our f of x is going to serve as our x value for our function g. So if you're looking at g of x being 2 times x squared, what this means is, is it means that whatever our x value is for our g, we are going to put in our f of x. So how this looks like is this. Normally you guys see g of x. So if it was g of x, and let's say we said x was equal to 2, you would see g of 2. What that means is we want the function when x is equal to 2. Well here, because it's f of x, we would almost rewrite this as g of, in, instead of f of x, we will write what f of x is. So what does that mean? It means that wherever there's an x value in our g function, we will replace that x value with 3x minus 8. Just like up here, if I said g of 2, you would just plug 2 in for your x. Well, now we're going to plug in 3x minus 8 for our x. So it looks like this. 2, and then instead of x, we're going to put 3x minus 8. And then we still have to square it because that's where it is. So 2, and then instead of x, we wrote what x was equal to, which was our f of x value, 3x minus 8. Now we go through and evaluate this. So 3x minus 8 squared. So we have 2 times 3x minus 8, 3x minus 8, so we go through and FOIL that out, which gives us 9x squared minus 48x. And again, I'm saving time here with the FOILing because I know how to do that, do a squared uh, pretty much without multiplying it all out. So then when we multiply this through, we just have 18x squared minus 96x plus 128. And that's what g of x, g of f of x would be equal to. So again, if that was confusing, wait for the next example. But again, remember, all we're doing is whatever is in our parentheses here, that is what's representative of our x value of the function, of our original function. So in the second one, because f is the function we want, what we're doing is Whatever our g of x is, which is 2x squared, so this is going to be f of 2x squared. So what that means is, is wherever we see an x value in our f, in our function f, we will replace it with 2x squared. So writing this out, it will be 3. And now instead of the x, we are going to put 2x squared.
and then we finish. Do not forget to put the rest of it, minus 8. So remember, the entire function still has to be there. So we have 3x minus 8, and instead of the x, we write what our x is equal to, which is 2x squared. So then this multiplies out to be 6x squared minus 8. And that's it. So that's that. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Pause the video. Try and do these two on your own. Okay, and to save a little bit of time, I'm just going to write out the solutions while it's paused. And then when you hit play again, you will see the full solutions up here. So go ahead and hit pause right now. Okay, so hopefully uh, you got through these without much difficulty. If not, you know, try and think about where you got stuck and bring those questions tomorrow so we can make sure we work through this. But what we have is we have g of g of x. So therefore, g of, and then what I did was I just put what g of x was equal to as my x value, which is 2x squared. So when I write it out, it's 2 times x squared. So my x squared, instead of x, I put 2x squared. Now, we have this parentheses, so we're squaring this entire thing. 2 squared is 4 x squared squared is x to the fourth, and then 2 times 4x to the fourth is 8x to the fourth. Okay, so again, all we did is even though it was g and g, we just wrote out our function. 2, and then wherever there was an x, we put, a, we put what x was equal to, in this case, 2x squared. Next one, so f of f of 5. What that means is we want our x value to be our f which is 3x minus 8, but at the very end we want to plug in 5. So this may have confused you at first, and that's okay. Um, so just make sure you write out the solution now. Basically we have 3x minus 8, so instead of x we put 3x minus 8 because that's what f is equal to. And then we just simplified that. 9x minus 24 minus 8, 9x minus 32. Now at this point, because they wanted x to be 5, that's where we plug in x is equal to 5, so we get 45 minus 32 is 13. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you have specific questions, make sure you write down where you got stuck on each of these problems, and then that way we can, you know, I can help you clarify in class. Okay, this last example, very similar, except now we're going to be dealing with domains a little bit here. So here we have f of x equals 2x to the negative 1. Right away, you should rewrite this. It makes it a whole lot easier. 2x to the negative 1. We bring that x to the negative 1 to the bottom. So that means it's going to be 2 over x because that's x to the first. And then we leave our g of x the same. So it says find f of g of x. Well, that means we want f of 2x plus 7. In other words, we're going to rewrite this function right here, and instead of x, we're going to have 2x plus 7. So that means we have f of g of x is equal to 2 over, and then this is where we replace our x value with 2x plus 7. And actually, that's as simplified as it can get. So that's the easy part. The next part is stating our domain. And remember, if we look at each of these separately, okay, we need to we need to look and see what is appropriate for our values. So that's what we're going to look at right now. So when we're doing the domains, before when we did the addition, subtraction, and all that, we looked at these, we looked at our f of x and g of x separately. When we're doing a composite, that's not necessary. All we really need to look at is just our new function. So that's all we're looking at is the bottom of this and what makes that 0. So that's what we would figure out real quick. We have 2x plus 7 equals 0, minus 7 minus 7, 2x equals negative 7, so x is equal to negative 3.5. So therefore, x is not allowed to be negative 3.5, so our, dom our domain would be all real numbers. where x is not equal to negative 